Hello and welcome to what's new in Reaper 7.12. And in this update, there is actually some pretty new unique features that I haven't seen in other DAWs. We've got improvements to track lanes and editing, uh, new peaks, display mode, and much more. Let's get into it. First, a quick update for the default theme. Mixer Layout B is now a reworked strip layout. So we're going to go over to the Mixer view. Let's just add another track. We'll set this to Layout B by right click, track layout, Mixer panel, and B. Now this is a compact uh, strip layout. I'll just add in a re-EQ just to show what it looks like when there's an effect. Uh, so the effects chain is not visible, unlike the layout A or uh, C. I'll just show you layout C here real quick. And layout C is uh, the sidebar layout, where if you had an effect, let's just add re-EQ to this track and to this track so you can see what that looks like. Layout B is this very narrow strip layout. Drag and drop, allow dragging effects and routing to tracks in Track Manager. All right, so we're gonna go to the View menu and Track Manager. And in here, we've got our list of tracks and it's now a target for drag and drop, which is pretty cool. So I'm just gonna grab this redelay and I can drag it anywhere within the Track Manager, choose a track to add that effect to. And there you go, so very simple. This also works for routing, so you'd have to have the mixer and track manager visible. So uh, let me just try to undock this. Let's just add in a bunch more tracks. So let's do uh, 28 tracks. So let's say I want to make a send from track one to track 28, for example. Let's just drag from the routing button in the mixer over to the track manager track 28. And that creates a send to track 28 with my default settings. So you may find this more convenient, especially if you have this docked. Let's uh, change this dock location there. So you may find it more convenient to route this way where let's say track 15, we want to go to track one, drag and drop over to the track uh, manager section and that works. You may find that easier, maybe not, but that's the thing you can do now. Add track settings for media items on higher numbered lanes to automatically mask playback of lower lanes. Display implied crossfade when a media item is masked by the fade in or fade out of another media item. And for tracks, add actions to crop to playing media items, not muted, not on lanes that do not play back, not masked by other media items or copy playing media items to new track. All right, so in this project, I have a couple guitar parts. They're in fixed item lanes on the track. So there's three different lanes and um, they are all playing simultaneously. If I play this back, it's gonna be a mess. Right? But there is this option now, if we right click on any of these track lanes, media items in higher numbered lanes mask playback of lower lanes. And so now this automatically kind of follows whatever the most recent or the lowest, highest number, lowest lane will be the one that's playing and everything else will be masked. And I set my grid to quarters and then we can move this around and you can see how this changes, which ones are audible, which ones are visible automatically. So uh, I just sort of made some random edits there, but we'll see how this plays. Another really interesting thing is when you start adding crossfades, uh, you can see these, what they call implied fades. So the waveform of the overlapping areas is showing uh, that fade automatically, which is pretty neat. Uh, this is audible as well. you can actually hear both of those at the same time. So right here, I can't add in a fade because this is a masked item. I can put in a fade here because this is where the actual end of the item is. But this masked area, or well, I guess this is the masked area, but the overlapping sections where they're not masked, that's where you can see these fades being applied to the peaks. 
that's a really cool function. I haven't seen that anywhere else. There is a similar function in Pro Tools where they had different uh, voices that could be switched dynamically in sort of this way. Multiple tracks could be set to the same voice and whichever track had uh, priority, uh, that's the one you would hear and it would kind of just automatically fade between them, I guess. It was always sort of a hack to get around their limited track counts. But yeah, this is all within one track. This is a uh, sort of an interesting way of working here. For the crop actions, there's actually a few. Crop to playing media items, crop to playing media items for track under mouse, uh, crop to playing media items preserving fixed lanes, crop to playing media items preserving fixed lanes for track under mouse. So uh, these four track under mouse actions, you would have to assign to a key, um, otherwise, selection doesn't work it, it always goes to where your mouse is so these two you would need to assign to keys to actually make that work but these other ones crop to playing media items that's going to apply to the selected tracks and that's going to look like that when you run that and i'll undo and i'll show you this crop to playing media item preserving fixed lanes it looks like that so the lanes will still be there but any of the masked areas will be discarded and you'll see the fades in there. So the implied fades become real fades in this case. For the Media Explorer, add option to close window on escape key, support enabling, disabling, remapping individual channels for audio and MIDI, support manually entering time selection, start end times, support inserting selected portion of media into existing media item, apply preview channel playback configuration to media when inserting, display preview playback position, length time selection in bars and beats for beat-based media, and display ruler on media preview. So the Media Explorer got quite a few new features, which is great. So just to go through a few of those, um, there's a, a ruler and a time selection range box at the bottom. I'll just play this uh, quickly, turn it down. So you can see that there is a ruler there now and uh, time selections can be made. That part's not new, but now we can actually type this in if you wanted a specific time range, you can do that. Yeah, let's just set this to exactly one and exactly three. Along with that, there is the option of inserting into a, a selected, the selected portion into an item. So if I got an item here uh, and I selected the, let's, let's even put in a time selection there. Uh, if I right click, insert selection, uh, selected portion with loop disabled, that will insert the section that I had selected into the item that I had selected. Previous to this, it would insert the whole item at that position. For files that have stereo information, at least, there is this new stereo button here. Uh, for mono files, it will be grayed out. It will say mono, but for a stereo file, you'll see stereo. You can click this and there is a, uh, a channel mapper so you can only have the left channel, uh, only have the right channel, uh, have a copy of, of the, uh, the right channel. These settings will be applied to the imported file. So uh, if I just do mono, I should just get the left channel. Let's even put it on a new track. And so imported, yeah. Imported, I only got the left channel and if the effects chain for this item has the channel mapper with the same settings that were used. If I click reset, it goes back to the stereo file. Yeah, and, and so on. If you have a multi-channel file, it will give you every channel available. I don't know where I have any multi-channel files at the moment, but that does work. But yeah, and for MIDI files, uh, you're going to see a bars and beats grid at the bottom rather than minutes, seconds, milliseconds sort of grid. There's also the option of closing Media Explorer with the escape key. This is only when the Media Explorer is floating. So uh, undock the Media Explorer. We can set this to uh, close window on escape key. So I'll enable that and then the escape key will 
will hide that. So I'm use F1, my shortcut for bringing up the Media Explorer, customize yours uh, as you want. Um, but then, yeah, you can enable the escape key to close that. Uh, if I have that disabled and then press escape, that's not going to close the Media Explorer. So now that's optional. But again, that only works if this is not docked. If, uh, if I enable this, close window on escape key, and then I dock this, and I press escape, nothing happens because it's not a floating window. Moving on to peaks, add display mode to color peaks by loudness, LUFSM or LUFSS, or display a colored loudness graph over the media item. Add preferences to always generate and cache info for loudness, spectral peaks, even if not currently displayed. Support renaming presets for spectral loudness and spectrogram peaks. Support loading, saving, renaming, and resetting display presets from the peaks display window. Let's come out of fixed item lanes view, and I've got this file here. I'm going to go to the view menu, and then peaks display settings. And this is the default peaks mode. We've got spectral peaks, spectrogram, spectrogram plus peaks. Those were uh, previously added version five sometime, I think. And momentary loudness is the new one, as well as uh, LUFS uh, short term. Yeah, let's do short term. We can show a graph, which is what you see here, or we could do colored peaks. And so the, uh, the volume intensity is shown by color here rather than frequency, which we would be used to seeing with the spectral peaks where the dominant frequency is shown. This is now showing LUFS M or LUFS S is showing sort of intensity and then there are multiple bands that you can you can have here for um, for yeah the different gradient of intensity here. So as I change the volume, you can see the colors changing, and you can choose all of the transition points for that. So there's up to band F here and the baseline that you can change the color. Um, and if we go to the show graph mode, we can see a short-term loudness graph for this item or a momentary loudness graph for this item. So this is not going to be affected by, um, by track effects. So keep that in mind. It's not always going to be useful for mixing. Uh, this can be helpful for reference tracks probably. Uh, and this is a setting that's going to be applied globally. So this is a display mode, but of course you can just turn this on as needed, turn it off after you've got your information. The height of the graph is not influenced by the display zoom, but it is influenced by the, uh, the volume of the item. And because this is loudness units, it is directly uh, impacted by plus or minus decibel amounts. This menu here in the peaks display Settings window will allow you to load presets, save presets, rename presets, and you can also open up the settings for peak generation. We'll do that. And this brings us to the preferences. This is the new option here. Do not generate any enhanced peaks when in plain peaks view. So uh, that's going to be enabled by default, not generating enhanced peaks until you choose the, the uh, momentary loudness setting but you can generate the, um, the full quality loudness analyzed peaks um, by disabling the setting. Anytime you record or anytime you import media, it will generate the loudness graph and things like that. Preferences, add new editing behavior automation items page. Move existing preferences there. Add new media peaks generation page. Add preference for fixed lane tracks to enable media items in higher numbered lanes, masking lowered number lanes by default. So yeah, a couple pages of editing behavior has been uh, adjusted. So the automation page uh, no longer involves automation items. Those have their own page. Uh, the peaks generation page here, anything related to peaks is, an, is now here other than where they're actually saved, which is still under the uh, paths page. And then for track defaults, uh, you can choose fixed lane defaults 
and whether they are masking by default or not. Final topic for today, wildcards add support for notes wildcard, which uses the text from the project settings notes dialog. So project settings, uh, you're going to have a shortcut for project settings in your main toolbar. I don't, but I use alt enter for that. And the notes page title and author options here before available as wildcards, but this whole window now, if you type something in here, this is a test of the notes wildcard. And then we could call this a uh, project name um, by Reaper blog. And we'll hit OK. And then when we render a project, let's just let's just select that area, go to file and render. The wildcards will work pretty much anywhere in here. So instead of project, which is unsaved project, we can call this um, title and that puts in project name, or we, this could be um, author, reaper blog, dash, dollar sign, uh, title. We'll put in reaper blog dash project name. And in the metadata, if we enable adding new metadata, go here. So title, we can call this dollar sign title. And description, we can put in dollar sign notes. That should autofill notes. Comment, uh, probably work with notes. And for artist, we'll put in dollar sign uh, author. Apply, okay. We'll render the time selection to new file. Amazeballs. There we go. And there we go. There's the file. I'll just bring that in so we can see the settings. I will uh, open up source properties to see the metadata. And there we go. So for the metadata, we've got title, project name, artist, reaper blog, comment. This is a test of the notes wildcard. For description, this is a test of the notes wildcard. Um, yeah, and you can see that is copied to all the various uh, versions of metadata that Reaper will write at export. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy these videos, if you like them, consider becoming a patron so I can, you know, afford to make videos for you uh, or a YouTube channel member. There's a link down in the description. Uh, as well, if you missed any of the previous update videos, there's a link to a playlist with everything going all the way back to Reaper 5. Uh, there's thousands of little tips that you can learn from that. Yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, you can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. You can support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaper.blog for more tutorials.